Hi, I'm Renee Tucci, and today we're going to create miniature designs that are a feast for the eyes. Today's design is going to take advantage of blooms that are maybe very short stemmed or perhaps accidentally broken off of a main stem. This happens all the time. It's very, very common, especially when we're handling a large amount of flowers, whether it's in a flower shop setting or if you're at home and you happen to see a bloom in your garden that you love, but the stem is really short. How can we feature that in a special way? Well, today we're going to make flower sushi. And I'm going to start by using some floral foam. And this is actually a scrap piece of floral foam, so I'm trying to, you know, we don't want any waste. We want to use everything we've got. So I'm going to take this piece of floral foam and with my knife, I'm going to cut it into a smaller section. And from, a, from there, I'm going to square it off because as we know, sushi is generally round and so the goal here is to make a round um, vessel for our flower to live in. So now we've got a squared off piece of floral foam. It's a bit too tall so I'm going to take the long side. I'm going to cut that in half and then I'll take that half and again it's square and we want it to be round so I'm just going to use my knife and just trim away the hard corners on each of the four sides. So there we have it. It's not a, a perfectly round uh, piece of floral foam, but it's much more round than it was, and it's going to work perfectly for our sushi. And this is about the size of a healthy piece of sushi. Okay, so once you've got your floral foam cut to the size that you want, now we need to make it so that it holds water. As we know, this foam will soak up water and it will sort of keep the flowers alive with that water. Uh, but if there's nothing holding the water in, it will just come right out. What we're gonna do is we're gonna seal it with glue. So I've got a pan here filled with hot, with uh, glue pellets that have been melted down. This is a non-stick pan that is commonly used for cooking pancakes and things like that. Um, but in my house, it's strictly for glue. And so uh, I melt down those glue pellets and uh, now it's ready to go. So I'm just gonna take my piece of foam and uh, this, I just wanna check the foam and make sure if there's any holes in the foam. Those holes are built in to absorb the water. So I wanna make sure I don't clog them up, but it looks like I have holes on both sides, so I'll just pick one. I'm gonna take that bottom, and I'm just simply going to dunk it right into the glue, just enough so that enti it entirely coats the bottom, and then about an, a quarter of an inch to a half an inch up the side of the foam as well. So now I've created a little cap for the bottom of this piece of foam, and that's going to help to keep the moisture from seeping out. You could go even higher up on uh, the foam, and I think I will just to make even, even more of a, of a moisture cap here. And I'm just tapping the excess glue off on the side of the pan. I'm not scraping it. I don't wanna take all of the glue off, but just tapping away the excess so that I don't create a mess and drag the glue everywhere. So then once you've got that glue on the foam, still leaving quite a bit of it exposed to allow for flower insertion, we're just gonna let that dry. Okay, now our the glue on our sushi foam has hardened. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that soak in a bowl of water. Anytime we want flower foam to take in the water, we just let it soak and sit on the water and sink in. Uh, we never want to forcefully push that foam in because that will cause air pockets. So while that's soaking up the water, I just want to talk to you about a technique we're going to be using in our flower sushi. And that technique is tailoring. So tailoring is a technique when you take a piece of foliage or a botanical material and you cut it, staple it, pin it, glue it, you modify its appearance 
to make it look like something else. So I have a few examples here to show you. This is a common palm leaf and I can tailor it a many, many different ways. One of which would be to completely trim one side of the leaflets and create this sort of look where I've it's a very graphic part of the leaf is missing. That's a really cool and contemporary look. You could additionally um, trim these leaflets to be uh, different lengths and make a pattern with them that way. Something like that. Another example of tailoring would be, here's a tea leaf. And again, we could make a really cool graphic pattern with this. If we took our leaf, Fold it, folded it gently in half, maybe not uh, crease it, but just fold it temporarily. And then we're gonna go ahead and like we were cutting a snowflake out of paper, we're just gonna start to trim away some pieces of the leaf here. And by folding it in half, we're working once and we're getting double the, uh, double the effect. And so now we've got cutouts on that tea leaf. You can do lots of different versions of this. Those are some examples of tailoring. We're gonna do something a little different on our flower sushi here today. So I've got my little foam nugget all soaked up. Now we have to cover that, of course. We don't want our foam mechanic to show. So I've got an aspidistra leaf here. This is actually a variegated aspidistra leaf, so it's got some striations to it. And I'm gonna go ahead and trim away the stem. We don't need that. But we do want to leave, use as much of the leaf as possible. I'm probably gonna get two sushi rolls out of this leaf. But down here where the stem was, it does get really uh, thick. The vein in the center of the leaf is thick and hard to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and strip that away. And I do that by laying the the leaf on its face. So now I'm looking at the back of the leaf and right where the leaf starts to get thick and the vein starts to get hard, I'm gonna take my knife and just dig into the vein just a bit. I don't dig so that I go clear through, but just so that I bite into that vein and then carefully pull. And while I'm pulling, it's cutting away the thick outer part of that vein. So now that bottom area is much more flexible and so it'll be easy to wrap around our sushi. So I'm going to take my sushi and I'll just start it on one side and roll until I have coverage. There we go. Once I see that I've got good coverage, I'm gonna cut away the rest of the leaf and I'll save this for another one. And now I'm going to take some boutonniere pins or black pearl headed pins and I'm just going to use them to hold the leaf in place. So I'll just take three of those and I'll layer these down the leaf. And now we've got the leaf in place. Now because the leaf is not flat, we've got a bit of a unevenness happening on both sides. So I'll just use my scissors to trim those away as flush as I can. Now the bottom is flush and that looks great. It's a great little base to work off of. The top, I, uh, I can cut that flush as well or I can leave it taller and sloped. And I have an example to show you of that, but for this example, I'm actually going to cut it just about flush to the top of the foam. So now I've got a really nice looking little nugget here. Uh, so how do we add our flowers? Well, if you're using one large flower that will go all the way to the to the top of the foam, then you don't have to worry about covering your mechanics. But if you're using multiple blooms, there's a chance that between those blooms, you'll see through to the foam, and we don't wanna see the foam, as I just mentioned. So I've just got a little bit of moss here, very little bit, kind of seaweedish. This is green Spanish moss. And I'm just going to place that right on top of the foam, just like that, and 
it'll tuck in once I start adding the flowers or if it's sticking out a little bit too much at the end I can just go through and trim that away with my scissors. And now we're going to add our flowers. So I've got this carnation which broke off of our stem accidentally and a few other blooms. So I'm going to add these in in little clusters. I do want to sink them down into the foam as far as I can. I want them to have as much opportunity to soak up water as possible because although we created that cap, that seal of glue, it's not sitting in a reservoir. So it will dry out eventually. And in that case, you want to make sure that you choose your flowers carefully. So here I'm using flowers that are all very long lasting. They don't drink a lot of water and uh, they'll hold up for a while as the foam dries out. I've got a sweet ranunculus bud here. And actually, this is a side bud off of a larger, uh, more feature ranunculus. So it's great, it's a great, this application is a great way to use the uh, additional botanical materials. Again, here's another example. These are the side buds that come on the ranunculus and they're such great little textural addition. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this in to my sushi. And then I've just got some hypericum berries and these are sweet, sweet little somethings that are just gonna get added in to the edges. And I'm doing it in little groups as a sushi might be laid out where you've got, well, I'm a vegetarian. So if I get the vegetable sushi, it'll have a little cluster of asparagus. It'll have a cluster of, of uh, lettuce. It'll have a cluster of uh, avocado um, in little groupings throughout the roll, the sushi roll. And that's what I've created here with my little flower bundle. Isn't that a cute and uh, easy way to stretch your blooms even further? Okay, so here we have a tray of flower sushi ready to be served. And I've got several different examples here. I've got uh, a single ranunculus with a little bit of the seaweed moss, or a single ranunculus that presses all the way in and you don't even see the foam. It's just a sweet little something. We've got some clusters here. That in this case, I have some pom-poms, some hypericum berries, and a stem of a bloom off of a gladiola stem. And this is the example where I left the leaf taller at the top, so it spirals down in the front and wraps around the top and really encapsulates our little cluster. It's really sweet. Um, here's three little tulips that have been pressed in here with a little bit of chartreuse green uh, reindeer moss. Again, very seaweed looking. And then of course we have clusters similar to what we made in our example. Another way to display these, whether it's for a dinner party or if you're a retail florist and you wanna set these at your register as a little grab and go add-ons, you can create a bamboo or a river crane, river cane tatami mat. And I've actually uh, shown you how to create this in my holiday tapestry video. So I'll put a link to that down underneath this video. But you can create this with very few pieces of river cane. Just set your sushi nuggets right on top. And how fun is this display? It's really good enough to eat. I hope you've learned a tipper technique and that you have a great day.